What is up guys, Julian Mikkel here of Social Vignerons. Welcome back to another wine video. This is episode number two of the Talking Wine with Julian series. If you're new here and you haven't watched episode number one, here is the principle in short. I am a winemaker and a wine blogger and a wine writer and I've spent the last 20 years making wine and studying wine, but I want to keep learning and exploring and discovering more things about wine. And more importantly, I want to share the experience of learning and share the knowledge that I already have. So in this series, I'm going to take a topic and a few minutes of your time to share what I already know and share what I've learned through the research preparing the video. Today's topic is going to be one that is dear to my heart because I lived in New Zealand for quite a few years, six years to be exact. And today's topic is going to be New Zealand wines. I'm going to give you my top five facts, what you should really know about New Zealand wine. Make sure to stay tuned for the bonus fact at the end of the video that will help you understand better the New Zealand wine on the global wine scene. Just a few minutes about New Zealand wine. Let's go. So fact number one, the grape varieties and the wines of New Zealand. New Zealand makes about 80% white wine, so big majority of white wines. And obviously, as you probably already know, the top wine grape variety in New Zealand is Sauvignon Blanc, which makes up about 62% of the total uh, New Zealand wine output. But New Zealand is not all about Sauvignon Blanc. They make about 15% uh, Pinot Noir wines as well. So Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir are definitely the top two uh, grape varieties to look out for from New Zealand. But there are a few more grape varieties which much smaller proportions. Uh, this is Chardonnay, uh, Pinot Gris and Merlot. So the common things about the uh, Kiwi uh, wines and the Kiwi grape varieties is that, well, first, the wines aren't cheap, and a couple of reasons for this. Uh, they are quite expensive to produce because it's quite a remote location. And secondly, perhaps more importantly, Kiwi wines are actually very good. All the grape varieties are very, very fragrant. Most of the time, dry wines and quite acidic, strong acidity, dry, savory, food friendly wines. Fact number two the wine regions of New Zealand. New Zealand is quite a long country divided in two islands and it covers about a thousand miles up to north, 1600 kilometers. So there are different sub-regions and valleys uh, that are quite far apart from each other and quite a few different climates uh, as well as you can imagine. So New Zealand, some people may imagine it's a small island with just one big vineyard uh, somewhere. No, it's actually different regions. Uh, the main wine region is obviously uh, Marlborough, who is making over 70% of the total wine output and that's on the South Island. It's a big, large uh, valley covered, covered in vineyards uh, these days. Um, but the second uh, biggest wine region that is less famous outside of New Zealand uh, is Hawke's Bay on the North Island uh, on the uh, East Coast. So it's got a bit more of a Mediterranean warm uh, climate where they grow a very good, excellent Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon and also uh, excellent uh, Syrah. Other wine regions in New Zealand uh, include uh, Martinbro that is particularly famous for their Pinot Noir wines that are earthy, uh, quite savory and that are excellent, some of the best Pinot Noirs in the country. And then comes obviously Central Otago, very south on the South Island, one of the thousand most vineyards area in uh, the whole world. And they are particularly famous for the Pinot Noir. It's a dry, arid uh, area with a lot of sun, but still very southern. So quite cold, but with a lot of warm sun, which results in big, uh, very fruity expression of Pinot Noir uh, wines. Remember that there are a few different areas and that's also what makes New Zealand wine really interesting and worth exploring more. Fact number three, what you should know about New Zealand wineries. There are four big um, players uh, on the domestic uh, New Zealand Kiwi wine scene. Uh, four uh, big brands that produce uh, big volumes and that export uh, massively that you should definitely know about. Two are internationally owned by foreign uh, companies. Uh, first one being owned by Pernod Ricard. They own several wineries. The main uh, winery that they 
own and that they operate is called Brancut Estate, used to be called uh, Montana. Uh, they were pioneers in planting uh, Sauvignon Blanc in Marlboro back in 1975 and they were the first ever to produce a Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc wine that was released in 1979. So a big uh, group but making also some very interesting wines, so particularly they released a few years ago uh, chosen Rose Sauvignon Blanc, a very specific selection of top Sauvignon Blanc vineyards uh, that are blended together. Very interesting, you should check this out. The second big player on the international scene is owned by Constellations brand and uh, <clears throat> they come out uh, with a few different brands, uh, Nobilo and they're very famous under the Kim Crawford uh, label and they used to have uh, one called Monkey Bay uh, as well. The other two uh, big players are Kiwi owned, Kiwi operated uh, and they are Villa Maria and Delegates, uh, Delegates with their brand uh, that is available worldwide that is called Oyster Bay. But there are about 500 different wineries all uh, around New Zealand. I don't have time to elaborate more and quote them all, but I'm going to give you a few uh, of some of the most iconic and interesting ones. Um, you should look out for Kumu River up north uh, in Auckland, very close to Auckland City. Uh, some of definitely some of the best, best Chardonnays, very interesting Chardonnays aged and, and made on lees in barrels in a burgundy style. Some of the top Chardonnays uh, come out of Kumu River. If we're talking Hawke's Bay, and I'm going down the map of New Zealand here, if we're talking Hawke's Bay, um, look out for Craggy Ranch, uh, very popular red wines, Bordeaux blends, Syrah, and my personal favorites uh, out of Hawke's Bay, uh, Temata Estate, as well as Church Road. If we're going a bit further south in Martin Bro, uh, Wairarapa next to Wellington, uh, there you should look out uh, for Dry Rivers uh, wines, certainly iconic, mm -hmm. quite rare, rare wines, small producers, uh, but they make some outstanding world-class wines, super interesting. And my personal favorite in Martinbro, Atarangi, fantastic Pinot Noirs, the true essence of uh, Martinbro uh, there. If we're going to Marlboro, of course, I talked about uh, Brancourt uh, Estate. Uh, the most famous there, one of the most famous is obviously Cloudy Bay, operated by LVMH, Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy Group. Excellent Sauvignon Blanc, archetypical of uh, Marlboro. Uh, my personal favorite there, I like uh, the Clos Saint Henry uh, Sauvignon Blancs in particular, made by the Bourgeois family, a French uh, family uh, from Sancerre. So, a bit of a Marlboro expression of Sauvignon Blancs, so very powerful and pungent uh, wines, but with a French touch, uh, they are a little bit more tamed. And it's actually a trend uh, in uh, with New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. They used to be so grassy, punchy in your face a lot of passion fruit a lot of uh, grassy characters to them but the New Zealand uh, industry has been uh, headed towards more refined more restrained expression uh, lately you can see it at the New Zealand wine awards more and more uh, restrained expressions of Sauvignon Blanc in a more um, Sancerre Bordeaux expression of a Sauvignon Blanc aged on lees, natural yeast, uh, come out on the market and are, are very, very successful. So it's getting even more interesting uh, to look at and to investigate New Zealand wines at this stage. Finally, if we go in central Otago and I've never been there, which is a real regret, uh, look out for Ripon uh, Estate, bio biodynamically grown grapes uh, they use in their own estate, one of the most stunning uh, vineyard spot probably on earth uh, and I've heard very good things about two paddocks uh, which is a small winery down there as well uh, making fantastic or what I've heard is are fantastic Pinot Noirs and um, the winery is owned by Jurassic Park you know the movie remember the movie Jurassic Park actor Sam Neill probably the most famous uh, Kiwi actor I've never tried their wines, I got in touch with the winery a couple of times, I never had an answer at all, so fortunately I've never tried them, but they are very popular, very, very uh, famous and renowned and looked out for out there. Okay, should really get uh, cracking on uh, with uh, point uh, number four, which is, uh, yeah, who drinks uh, New Zealand wine in the world? 
the kiwis uh, drink about 20% of the port production uh, only, so they export 80% of all the wines that they produce. The kiwis love their wine, they love their barbecues, and they love their Sauvignon Blanc and other grapes uh, locally, but they export 80% of the production. Who drinks New Zealand wine in the world? Well, mainly three countries. About 30% of all New Zealand exports are drunk in the UK and another, nearly another 30% in the US and 22% in Australia. So all in all, 80% of all wine exports out of New Zealand go to the US, the UK and Australia. And the fourth country is Canada with only 5%. Uh, so that explains why if you're not in one of those four countries, New Zealand wines can be pretty hard uh, to get by. Unfortunately, New Zealand wine production is relatively small, so the wines are a little bit uh, scarce, which also explains uh, their prices. My point number five, wine tourism in New Zealand. Yes, New Zealand is a very popular, very famous wine destination. It's a beautiful uh, country, as we know, loads of outdoors activities from bungee jumping to skydiving and, and, and you name them and exploring the countryside and the mountains. Wonderful country, but there's also a lot to do around wine tourism. There's about 700,000 uh, wine tourists, believe it or not, that go to New Zealand, mainly from the US, from the next door Australia and from China. 279 out of the 500 uh, wineries in New Zealand, 279 of them offer uh, over 450 different wine related activities. So if you ever go to New Zealand, make sure to look around for the cellar doors that are worth uh, exploring and going to and the different wine related activities. There's plenty and plenty, plenty uh, of them to do and obviously the kiwis as we know are always very very friendly and welcoming uh, people now to my uh, bonus fact new zealand is the 16th uh, most important in volume wine producing country in the world after countries such as hungary and brazil new zealand wine represents about one percent one tiny percent of the overall uh, wine global wine production if you compare this to bordeaux alone bordeaux produces double uh, that amount over 600,000 bottles and bordeaux only represents 15 percent of france's total wine outcome and i found that it's a pretty interesting interesting fact and gives you uh, a big a little sense of uh, the scale of the New Zealand industry. They make a fair amount of wine, uh, but it's actually uh, quite small if you look uh, closely. I will link to the different wineries I mentioned in this video and my top 25 most expensive New Zealand wines down in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, give it a like. I'm going to continue the journey. I'm going to try uploading some of these videos on a daily basis. Some will be a bit shorter. We will ex be exploring some more specific topics around wine making. I will be reviewing some wine accessories. I will be tasting wines. So make sure to stay tuned to the channel if you like learning and if you want to continue learning more about the wines of the world we are going to be exploring many facets of uh, the wine industry together on a daily basis so stay tuned uh, to the channel i will i hope you enjoyed uh, this video let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a specific topic covered here also question of the day which is your favorite New Zealand wine. Do you have a favorite winery? Do you have a favorite cuvee? Do you like Cloudy Bay, Te Coco? Do you like, uh, you know, any, any winery out there? I would love to hear um, your thoughts and which wines are available in your market, which wines uh, you like most and, you know, give the other watchers of these videos your own uh, little recommendations and i will perhaps try to get hold of those wines to review them for my series that is called tasting with julian that you should also check out and uh, this is me i've already talked too much here i will see you soon in the wine world tomorrow cheers <laughs>